in this lecture we shall consider center of mass and its motion in translational motion each point on a body experiences the same displacement as any other point as time goes on so that the motion of one particle represents the motion of the whole body but even when a body rotates or vibrates as it moves there is one point on the body called the center of mass that moves in the same way that a single particle subject to the same external forces would move when a system with which we are going to deal is not a rigid body a center of mass whose motion can also be described in a relatively simple way can be assigned even though the particles that make up the system may be changing their positions with respect to each other in a relatively complicated way as the motion proceeds here we define the center of mass and show how to calculate its position let us consider center of mass in 1d one dimensional system let us suppose that we have a straight line and there are two particles here for simplicity we consider two particles a uh, one with mass m1 the other with mass m2 and their distances from a point o are x1 and x2 we define a center of mass somewhere here say let us suppose this is c and Mm, it its distance uh, from the origin o is x c m then the center of mass x c m uh, is defined by this where this is the center of mass you can also rewrite this uh, equation as m1 into x cm equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 the center of mass position position of center of mass the center of mass position can be this considered as the mass weighted mean of x1 and x2 if we have n number of particles in a straight line in a state of two particles if we have if there are n number of particles nine then the position of the center of mass Can be defined this way.
in compact form we can write down this um, so is the position of the center of mass and where capital M is the sum of all the masses M1, M2, M3 dot 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 Mn. This is the total mass of this system. Uh, this one can be written as this now if we consider uh, center of mass in 2d we consider two perpendicular mutually perpendicular axes say this is x axis this is y and this is origin and let us suppose there are three particles so this is m1 the distance is x1 okay this is a coordinate of the point uh, of m1 this is uh, m2 and the coordinate coordinates of this position is x2 y2 and this is say uh, m3 position is x3 y3 and so on So, the x coordinate of the center of mass can be written this, uh, this similar to the one dimensional case. Okay, and we locate the center of mass somewhere here. Say C is the center of mass at a distance uh, along the x direction is x c m and along the y direction is y c m. So, we can write down the x coordinate of the center of mass is uh, m 1 x 1 plus m 2 x 2 and if we have n number of particles then m n x n. And similarly, along the y direction, we can write down the y coordinate of the center of mass in a similar fashion. Um, where m is the total mass. where j runs from 1 to n. Okay, now we consider center of mass in uh, three dimension. Uh, 
uh, similar to the 1D, 2D, uh, we can write down the center of uh, mass uh, by uh, by the x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate of the point. So, the x coordinate of the center of mass if there are n number of particles y coordinate of the center of mass and the z coordinate of the center of mass. Uh, if we define the uh, position of the center of mass by R C M, uh, which is x C M i y C M j where i, j and k are unit vectors along the x, y and z direction respectively and if we write down r j equal to x j i y j j z j k then in vector notation we can write down the center of mass by this. where m is the total mass of the system. This is the position of the center of mass in 3D, 3 dimension. We consider motion of the center of mass. Uh, from the from the equation that uh, we have written this uh, RCM equal to this, uh, we can have this uh, if we differentiate this equation uh, with respect to time t um, uh, 
we get this where the velocity is the time derivative of the position or displacement. If we further differentiate this equation, uh, we obtain with the time derivative of the velocity we know is acceleration. So, you can write down. the right hand side you see this is the sum of the uh, of the forces this can write down this uh, f j where f j is the force which is mass into acceleration this means this is the total force f the total mass of the group of particles because this m is the sum of all the masses so you can say that the total mass of the group of particles times the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the vector sum of all the forces acting on the group of particles because this f is the sum of of all the forces among all these forces uh, there will be some internal forces exerted by the particles on each other however from newton's third law of motion these internal forces will occur in equal and opposite pairs so that they contribute nothing to this uh, to this sum hence the internal forces can be removed from the problem so the right hand side of this equation represents the sum of only the external forces acting on all the particles we can then rewrite this equation as this external force this f external the sum of all the external forces
uh, this equation uh, states that the center of mass of a system of particles moves as though all the mass of the system were concentrated at the center of mass and all the external forces are applied to that point. There are important applications of the concept of center of mass and we, sh we, uh, we shall solve some problems relevant to center of mass later on. Um, this is uh, for this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, uh, we shall consider moment of inertia for few objects with different geometrical shapes. Also, uh, we shall consider uh, two theorems uh, regarding moment of inertia.